Hi everybody, in this video we're going to look at long run costs. So remember that the long run is a period of time where all factors of production are variable. So now businesses can increase any of their factors of production, land, labor, capital and enterprise. And when they do so, we call that scale. The business is scaling up and therefore the long run is all about returns to scale. What is the change in output when we increase those factors of production, when a business scales up? That's returns to scale, and that's what we're gonna study here in the long run. And in truth, the shape of the long run average cost curve, the key cost curve, is due to returns to scale. If you think about it, the long run consists of lots and lots of different short runs. Initially, a business is confined by fixed factors of production, but eventually they can increase their factors of production, but then they're confined again by a new level of fixed factors of production until they can increase again, etc., etc. So the long run consists of lots of different short runs, and when we join up all those short run positions, we end up with a long run average cost curve that looks like this. That is the cost curve that you need to know in the long run, the long run average cost curve. And it's shaped like this, a very interesting shape, because of returns to scale. We can show that more clearly by breaking this curve up into three different parts. So we'll have part one over here, we'll have part two in the middle, and we'll have part three on the right hand side. So what's going on in each stage? Well, in stage one, a business is benefiting from increasing returns to scale. So there are increasing returns to scale there. There are constant returns to scale in the middle here, and there are decreasing returns to scale in stage three here. Let's understand what we mean by returns to scale by looking at these equations. So if we start with increasing returns to scale, increasing returns to scale occur when the percentage change of output is greater than the percentage change of inputs here. Now that makes a lot of logical sense when we apply it to the diagram. So when a business is increasing their inputs, their factors of production, they're getting more out than they're putting in. The percentage change of output is greater than the percentage change of inputs. So costs are rising, yes, but output is rising faster and therefore average cost is decreasing. Decreasing returns to scale is the opposite. It's so when the percentage change of output is less than the percentage change of input. So when a business is increasing their inputs, their factors of production, costs are rising, but they're getting less out in return. So quantity is rising, but slower than the increase in costs, and therefore average cost is going to be increasing. Constant returns to scale is when the two are equal. So when the percentage change in output is equal to the percentage change in input. And therefore we have average costs which are flat, which are constant there. Okay, that's all well and good. We can actually uh, look at these in more detail with this numerical example. So what we have here is a business with two inputs, capital and labor. They're the two factors of production that are changing. And we have output here. So from this data, we can calculate the percentage change in input and the percentage change in output. Remember to get percentage change. It's the difference between two numbers divided by the original, the starting number, times by 100. So let's have a look at how we can do this. Well, let's do the percentage change in inputs first. So as we go from 170 total inputs to 340 total inputs, that's 100% percentage change. What about the change in output? Well, from 3,000 to 7,500, using the equation before, we get to 150. So if we calculate all the percentage changes, we get these numbers in blue, and from these numbers, we can work out returns to scale. So we can see here um, that for the first increase in inputs from 170 to 340, and for this change in output, the percentage change in output is greater than the percentage change in input. So therefore, this business is experiencing increasing returns to scale. Same for the next increase in inputs. But for the next increase in inputs, we can see that the two are equal, so this is constant returns. And we can see that for this change in inputs, so from 680 through to 850 here, uh, we get this change in output, and we can see that the percentage change in output now is smaller than the percentage change in input. So this is decreasing returns to scale, fine. So we can do numerically, and you have to be able to do something like that, very simple stuff. But why? Why can a business experience increasing returns to scale, or why can they suffer from decreasing returns to scale? Well, it comes down to something known as economies of scale. So economies of scale here, or diseconomies of scale over here. 
The two are very much linked. They are separate concepts, very much linked together. If a business experiences economies of scale, they can experience increasing returns to scale and vice versa for diseconomies of scale. My next video is gonna look at economies of scale and diseconomies of scale in far more detail. So make sure you stay tuned for that and you'll have very good understanding of these economies and diseconomies of scale. But that's the reason why a firm therefore can experience increasing returns to scale or suffer from decreasing returns to scale. That explains it. There is one more concept that we need to learn here and that is the concept of the minimum efficient scale. The minimum efficient scale or the MES occurs there at quantity Q star. What is the minimum efficient scale? Well, it's the lowest level of output required to exploit full economies of scale. So it's the lowest level of output whereby the average cost curve here stops decreasing and that occurs here at Q star. The lowest level of output required to fully exploit all economies of scale. After that point, there are no more economies of scale. All that happens is we get constant returns to scale. So this is a very important point for a business knowing that after this quantity, costs can't get any lower than this. So that's the MES point, very important to understand that. And before we finish, we just look at two alternative shapes of the long run average cost curve. You might see a long run average cost curve that looks like this. This is very unrealistic because it shows that there is no honeymoon period, there's no constant returns. And in the real world, it's very rare that a business will hit its MES and then straight away suffer from decreasing returns, diseconomies of scale. Very unlikely. There is always gonna be this period of constant returns, most likely. So therefore, this bucket diagram, call that because it looks like a bucket, is more realistic than that one. But if you see that, don't be fooled. And then we also have this long run average cost curve for a natural monopoly. We're gonna study natural monopoly in more detail later in the playlist. But basically a natural monopoly has got very, very, very high fixed costs. And therefore, for a natural monopoly to minimize its average cost, it's gonna take a huge level of output to do so. And therefore their long run average cost curve is constantly downward sloping over an output range. They don't really get to diseconomies of scale until output is ridiculously large. And therefore the potential for economies of scale is very, very big for a natural monopoly. So that's the LRAC curve for a natural monopoly. We're gonna look at that in much more detail later in this playlist. But don't be fooled if you see these alternative shapes, um, absolutely fine. And the understanding is still exactly the same as what we've done here. So that covers the long run average cost curve, that covers long run costs, but we must understand economies and diseconomies of scale in far more detail if this topic is to be fully understood. So I'll see you all in that next video where we do exactly that.